Hi, in this video we are going to uh, learn how to draw uh, a diagram of a computer using the basic drawing skills that you hopefully saw in the first video in this series. Um, so we're going to draw something uh, that we could use as the main menu for the interactive presentations that we're making about the insides of the computer. Now you don't have to do it exactly as I'm doing it, uh, but this is what I did to make mine and maybe it will help you to uh, watch what I do and to follow the same sort of steps. So the first thing we need is the actual sort of box that the computer goes inside. So for that I'm just going to get a rectangle, okay, and I'm just going to draw a yeah, a fairly decent sized rectangle. Okay, and that can be the box that the computer goes in. Now, uh, we need to put a few things inside the computer, one of which is going to be the motherboard. Um, so again, I'm going to get another box. And a motherboard takes up most of the space in a computer, probably, so sort of about that size. And most motherboards are sort of a dark greeny colour, so I go to my fill colour. I've got my new rectangle selected, so I'm going to go to the fill colour. I can choose a dark green and um, I might change the background color on it as well um, to just straight black. Okay, so that could be my motherboard. And some things have to go on the motherboard. So the most important thing in a computer is the CPU, uh, which conveniently is normally just a little sort of black um, square or a dark gray square. So let's draw that in the middle here and I can change that to dark grey, black background, and that can be the CPU. Uh, now RAM chips, RAM chips are also sort of green chips um, and they are also rectangles, so I've grabbed my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw them one here and given that they're the same I'm going to get one right and then I'm going to copy it. So if I go now to my fill colour I'll make it a slightly lighter green so that it stands out against the motherboard Okay, and I can go to edit, copy, edit, paste to make another one, and I can put it next to. Now notice, while I'm dragging around, Google Slides actually produces these sort of red lines, and these are showing me how my current position lines up against other objects. So if I, as long as I keep it along this sort of horizontal line, I know it's lined up centrally um, along its kind of vertical, so it's in exactly the right um, vertically alignment sorry, vertical alignment to the other RAM chip. Okay, so I can pop it there next to each other, and there we go, two RAM chips. Uh, now, a computer normally has some sort of disk drive, uh, maybe we're going to put a DVD drive in, and that normally, let's imagine this is the front of the computer and this is the back, so it probably sits in it a bit like this, and that could be a sort of a darker grey colour maybe. Okay, that could be a DVD drive. And a hard disk is pretty common, or a solid-state disk, pretty essential. So we'll put one of those in there, normally a bit smaller. I'll put one of those in underneath. And again, let's colour it. Oops, I've made it not quite the same colour. There we go, that can be the hard disk. I might just move it down a little bit. So DVD drive and hard disk. Uh, now, a computer needs a power supply as well. Again, another rectangle, unsurprisingly. So we can grab the rectangle tool and maybe pop it up here. They're normally in the sort of top corner somewhere, and that can be the power supply. Now, we need a few uh, things to interact with our computer. Uh, so I'm thinking of a, a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. So, because so far this actually looks pretty good, I'm pretty pleased with this, and in fact, I would say this is pretty much finished, uh, the actual computer part, in which case, I'm actually going to do something which involves um, grouping all of these shapes together, so that, for example, if I click to move this around, if I do that currently, it just moves the background, uh, the box of the computer, which is a bit annoying. So let's edit, undo. Um, if I, however, drag, so click and drag the mouse around the whole thing and go to right click anywhere on one of those shapes, I can go to group and select that. Now I can click any part of the shape, move it around, and as you'll see, the whole thing moves together, which is so useful. So I'm glad I've grouped it, because that's going to make my life a lot easier. Right, let's do a monitor. So most monitors are, again, a rectangle shape. So we grab a rectangle, and that sort of might do as, a, as the sort of outside, and they tend to have a black inside, the actual screen part. So let's go inside, and let's make it uh, black. Okay, 
and they normally have some sort of stand so we can use another rectangle and do a sort of a little standy piece I'll just move that around notice it helpfully tells me that's the middle and maybe a sort of a platform for the stand as well okay so another rectangle so I've just made a monitor using nothing but uh, rectangles and I'm going to select that and I'm going to group it actually one thing I didn't do is I would like it to also have a message on the screen so I'm going to use a text box I can drag on my screen I'm going to choose white font because I'm not going to see it otherwise so I go to the text tool up here and then I go to white and I'm going to write hello this underscore is just like a little cursor on the screen it's just a bit of fun uh, now I might just change the font make it look like uh, maybe a bit more like an on-screen kind of font. I've got some some interesting ones here. This one, Quantico, that looks pretty good. You might have different ones on yours. Um, there we go, we've got a nice little font on there. Now I need to add that to my group. So again, I'll select it all, uh, ungroup what I have grouped, select it again, group again. Okay, so now I've got my monitor. Excellent. Keyboard and mouse. Now, a keyboard you might think, oh my word, I've got to draw so many rectangles for a keyboard, but actually we can use a bit of artistic license here and just give the impression of a keyboard without all the detail. Um, and I'm going to choose a sort of, um, rom no, what is this? This is a sort of trapezoid, yes, a trapezium sort of shape, because it looks like a rectangle but with some perspective, which is normally how you see a keyboard. So if I click and drag that out, uh, you can see already that that sort of looks like a keyboard from an angle and I'm just going to get another rectangle to give a sort of a thin front edge to it as well okay uh, so that sort of lines up nicely and there's my keyboard shape drag a box around them right click and group and there's my keyboard and as for a mouse well a mouse, again, we could do a circly sort of shape, a rounded rectangle. I actually quite like this shape. It's sort of square, but with a rounded edge. Um, so I'm going to draw that. Uh, but I kind of want it on a sort of angle so it matches uh, my keyboard. Now notice when I select it, we've got a little control up here. It's like a um, sort of a stalk almost with a, a dot on the top. Well, we can click on that and then you can rotate the shape around any way you like. So I'm just going to rotate it around like this so it sort of looks like it's next to my keyboard. We're getting pretty close I think. Now we just need some wires to connect uh, the computer to its input and output devices. So for that I'm going to go to the scribble tool and I'm just going to draw straight across to the back of the computer um, and I'm going to do the same for the keyboard. Okay. And let's say the device is the the, the the mouse is wireless, shall we? Uh, now it looks a bit untidy because our wires are sort of going in front of the computer. So we can select each one, right click, and order, and send to the back. So it goes behind the computer, and that looks a lot neater. So there you go, that's how you could draw um, a sort of a diagram of a computer system using nothing but the basic shapes and drawing controls in Google Slides.